Do you ever wonder how designers get that seamless look when using video and images in their Behance case studies? A couple months ago, I shared a video about how to do this through creating GIFs from your animated prototypes in Adobe XD. But since then, I figured out a way to do this for animations and prototypes that are longer and therefore the GIF file size would just be way too big. And that's what I'm gonna be showing you today. So as you see here, I have laid out and designed my entire case study in Adobe XD, basically just stacking these 1920 width artboards on top of one another. And if you look here where they go horizontal, that is where I have laid out my animations that I'm going to record and turn into MP4s and upload to Behance through Vimeo. So some of them you can see are pretty short. I was able to turn these ones into GIFs because there's not many frames and um, yeah, they're just a lot smaller of a file size. But when I tried to do that with this one, the file size was just way too large. So we're going to use this MP4 method here instead. And if you're new to XD and you haven't used auto animate or prototype mode or anything like that, and you don't really understand how I would create something like this, then I'd highly recommend checking out a video I have where I show you the basics of auto animate. And I'll just give you a high level of how I did this. So first I'll play the prototype for you. So basically I have this shape here that spins and then I have these elements fading in from an opacity of zero to an opacity of 100 and I've also got them fading up. And the way that I do that is just using auto animate and time triggers. So if you see, instead of using tap triggers in between all of these artboards, I'm using time triggers. And that means that I don't have to come in and tap on anything. I don't have to press any buttons or anything like that. It's basically creating a timeline for me. I have each element. Um, I've got it on the artboard where it's supposed to be appearing. I have it at a 100% opacity. And over on the artboard where it hasn't yet appeared, it is at a 0% opacity. And it's like a little bit off the screen either. Um, towards the bottom or towards the left side so that it looks like it fades up and in or fades over to the right and in. And that's basically what I've done. I did that with the tooltip here and I also did that with this line item here where it sort of just like animates in really quick. And so that's something that I designed ahead of time. And now what we need to do is record this prototype um, so that we can upload it to Vimeo. And whenever I record a prototype, I always make sure that I have it looping. And what I mean by that is I'll go to the very last artboard and in prototype mode, I will add a wire like this that goes all the way back to the first artboard. That way when I'm playing the prototype and recording it, I like to record at least two or three loops. That way when I'm trimming, I make sure I have one full cycle of the animation and it doesn't get cut off at the beginning or the end. So let's go ahead and do that now. I'm going to select the first artboard, go up to the play button and hit this record button. And I wanna make sure I move my cursor out of the way so that it doesn't interfere with the video. And like I said, we're gonna let this play through at least two times. Okay, then we'll stop the recording and then it's gonna ask me where I wanna save it. So I'm going to call this welcome animation and save it to the desktop. Okay, then we can click out of that and we can actually get rid of XD for now. Then we'll open up our video in QuickTime and that's how we're going to trim it. So how to do that is you just do Command T for trim and I'm just going to scrub through, find a good starting point. So I'm going to do it right when it starts the second cycle. And that is right there. And then I'm going to scrub through again and find right where that cycle ends. So then it's fading through. Perfect. And then we'll hit trim and let's watch it through just to make sure that looks good. 
And keep in mind, it is going to loop um, whenever we set this up in Behance. So don't worry about that. We just want one perfect full animation. Awesome. Okay, so then I'm going to save that. Then it's time to open up Vimeo and you can either log in or create your free account if you don't already have one. And we're just gonna go ahead and add a new video. So hover over here and click on upload. And of course you will just choose it from your desktop. It might take a few minutes, it has to upload and then convert. Once that's done, then you can tap into it. And what you're going to do is you'll kind of see these settings on this side. And the only thing that's really important is the embed settings. So go into those. And basically what you wanna do here is make sure that there's nothing crowding your video. So I like to turn off all of the controls. I'm turning off the play bar. So as you can see, that disappeared. I'm turning off the full screen option over there and I'm turning off all of these actions, which are up here. Okay, and then I'm also turning off all of this. So usually it's set on let users decide, but you have to turn that off and then turn off all of your details as well. So now you can see it's just the video that we're seeing, which is perfect. Of course, save. Then what you wanna do is make sure that it's going to loop. And to do that, it's a little tricky. It took me a long time to find these settings. So what you wanna do is actually click on this link and that's gonna take you to um, sort of outside of your account and into where someone would view your video on Vimeo. Click on share and you're going to scroll down here and you can see we have the embed code here but what's really important is that we want show options because we want to change these. So in terms of size, what we want is a fixed size and for me I'm going to do 1920 pixels wide because that is what all of my assets are in my um, Adobe XD file. They're all 1920 wide and so I want it to again look really seamless in there. So I'm going to do that and then I want to, I don't, don't want to show any text underneath. I do want to loop the video and to be honest I've tried to do autoplay before and haven't been able to get it to work so feel free to try that out um, I'm going to click it just to see what happens but usually I can't get it to autoplay and I'll show you what it looks like it is honestly fine in my opinion without the autoplay feature okay so then Basically, as we were making those changes, it was editing this embed code. So you can see here it says allow, allow autoplay and loop, and so we have the width 1920. So that's kind of like the updated embed code that we have. So I'm just going to copy using Command C, then we're gonna go into our Behance project. So as you can see, I've got all these PNGs uploaded, but I still need to upload that MP4 in between these two sections. So, if you hover over these two, you can see this dotted blue rectangle appears and you can insert media. So that's what I'm gonna do and I'm going to click on this embed icon. And I'm just going to paste that embed code in there. Click embed and then it really uploads quickly because it doesn't have to upload any actual media. It just is linking it from Vimeo. And so now we're going to play this and let's see if the um, auto loop feature is working. Yeah, perfect. So that's exactly what I wanted it to look like. You can see it looks really seamless with the rest of these here. Um, it kind of just flows right in. And if you have your mouse hovering on this, then you can see the play pause button and you can see the um, sort of timeline here or the progress bar, I should say. But if you don't have your mouse on there, it completely disappears and it's totally seamless. So I really like how that looks. Um, and in my opinion, that's the best solution for something like this. If you're sort of starting from scratch in terms of your Behance project, you can always just add content in this section over here. So you could just do embed and you could paste that in and it would just add 
if you don't have any media in there yet it would just add to the very top or if you have a couple things it'll add in the very next section as you can see here it added it at the very end of my case study so that is what it would look like if you are starting a brand new project from scratch all right guys i really hope that was helpful make sure to give this video a thumbs up and hit subscribe if you want to see more videos from me every single week thank you so much for watching and i'll see you guys in the next video bye